Hey there! Do you like this angry swarm of suitcases that I made? Nah, of course not. It's meaningless. At least, from this angle. But if I take a couple of steps in this direction, and, as directed by these cutouts, view them from a very specific vantage point, you'll see that what appears at first to be a random pile turns into something that you can do with your face. This would be an example of anamorphic perspective art, where the image can only be properly seen when standing from just the right spot. And it's nothing new. Actual artists have made actual installations of these in actual art galleries, actually. But since the art world is not an orbit that I travel in, I have instead turned a couple of my Fallout 76 camp shelters into something of my own private art gallery. And Suitcase Lips here is just the beginning. Well, nearly. Because if I'm going to give you a proper tour of what I've done, we should start from the very beginning. If you'll please keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times, our first stop will be at my vault lobby shelter, where we'll be greeted with some big red letters. Except they're not actually letters at all upon closer inspection. And the fact that they're red has less to do with anything of meaningful significance and more to do with how there are simply more red camp items than any other colour, at least that I have access to, that were of a suitable size. Larger objects would have needed to be pushed further back and may have ended up on the walkway. But anyway, if we move forward and up said walkway, as we reach the top, you might get the sense that there may be some Nuka Cola involvement based on some of this flagrant advertising. And the truth is, some of their corporate branding will show up in a pretty overt way a bit later. And I'm not just talking about how some objects have their logo on it. But we'll get to that. First, I have a confession. This room here, what I like to call my traditional arts room, was actually the last room I put together. And because I'd already about had enough at that point, my original intention was to simply merge some random items together, place them on these displays, slap some random paintings on the walls, and call that half-assed effort done. But as I was using that camp item merge trick on the first few objects, I started to think, what if? What if this thing with this other thing? These together could totally change the vibe of that first thing. And so I tried that. And then I got carried away. To be fair, it's still pretty random. But I'd like to think that now at least it's meaningfully random. But I wasn't done there. Because then my attention turned to the wall paintings that I put up. And I thought, if I was going to augment these sculptures in a way that looked like there was some purpose behind them, I may as well do the same for the wall decor. But how would you do that? It only really makes sense to add letters and write words on them. Well, as it turns out, it can be quite fascinating what you can do with letter sets when you go about using them inappropriately. But this is not what you came here to see. So instead, let's carry on through this door, which leads to my vault server room shelter. Wherein, immediately upon entering, our attention is directed to the left wall where we find some actually appropriate letters. You would be forgiven for seeking out a floating mat amongst all the debris. But no, this is just an ordinary mat serving as a floor marker. Standing on said marker will result in the floating pieces that you see before you coalescing into a four piece. If you're already familiar with anamorphic perspective sculptures as a concept, you may be aware that there are some examples where viewing from one spot will result in one image, while another angle will cause it to look like something entirely different. I'm not sophisticated enough to pull that off with what I've got, so all mine only work from their one mat. I should also mention that the wall paintings here on out are for decoration only and I wouldn't be able to add my own personal touch even if I'd wanted to because I'd hit the camp budget for this shelter. It's a shame, an uppercase Q could make for an excellent monocle. On the upside, 
I at least have something a bit more interesting than eyewear up ahead. You'll also notice that I've tried to keep everything on this tour law friendly. So I'm sad to report that none of these will be making any references to recent movie reboots or memes about things that toot. Instead, here is a simple point and shoot. Not my post-apocalypse weapon of choice, mine, I prefer my shotgun. But this gun looks cool and is a bit more iconic. And because it's not a real gun, and this is not a real art gallery, should you find yourself visiting here, it's perfectly fine to go around or over any of my barriers to take a closer look at the parts that make up this image, or any of the others. They're more of what you'd call guidelines than actual barriers. But what is an actual barrier though, is the divide between the buildable space in this so-called server room, and the actual servers, which are out of reach and mostly just there for show. But they do provide a neat visual parallax as you walk past them to get to the next room. So at least in that sense, it's got the whole perspective thing going for it. That leads to the second last build of this tour, though not necessarily second best. And I say that because this one can be a little tricky to comprehend what you're seeing at first glance. It's very red. It is larger than actual size. It is an animal. It is a bird sitting on a branch. Specifically, it's a cardinal, the state bird of West Virginia. And about six other US states as well, because it gets around. Probably. Before we flip around and go through the last door, a quick word about making something like this for yourself. I get that most people likely won't be inclined to put in the time and effort, but if you do, there's no big secret here. So here's a few basic steps to help get you started. Step one, actually no, step zero. Get yourself a shelter, like the one you get from completing the quest called Home Expansion. This is because when in a shelter, you can freely build objects floating in mid-air. Step 1. Make a corner. You'll want to do this with any object that's tall enough that you can't walk over it. The aim is to make an exact spot that you can reliably stand on every time. It's not necessary to add a mat, but I do to mine to provide clearer instructions to visitors. Because if you don't, and then tell people to stand in the corner, they may go, Duh, okay, now what? Step two, lighting. Because shelters are usually a little dark, a bit of extra illumination won't go astray. Use whatever spotlights or floodlights you've got. Because lighting can have an effect on how some objects look when lit, it's best to get this step out of the way early. Step 3. While standing on the spot in the corner you just made, start to float things in front of you, overlapping them to form larger shapes. I like to start by marking out a few key points to get a sense of how far apart things need to end up. If things start to get a bit cramped, turn off snapping for more control over densely grouped objects. Objects look smaller when moved further away, and larger when brought closer, which should go without saying. You can move them back and forth with the mouse wheel, or by holding A and using the left thumbstick on controller. Nice. If you don't get it right on your first attempt, that's okay. A bit of trial and error, as you get a feel for it, is to be expected. Remember that failure is a normal part of the process. If you fail, though you may be tempted to give up, a better response is to instead have a think about why that attempt failed and try something slightly different for the next time. That's how you'll learn and get better. That's how I learned to do this, at least. With all that in mind, let's now proceed through into my vault storage facility shelter and the last destination on our tour. And this being something of a grand finale, I did put a bit more effort and a few more pieces into this one. Don't ask me how many are in this, or how long this one took, because I really wasn't keeping track. But if I had to guess, 
it was uh, about a couple of weeks or so, and I'd say that there are at least three pieces. I know it's a little subtle, but this is that sponsored by Nuku Cola exhibit that I alluded to earlier. Would you like to take a guess at what this mess might be? Yeah, if you're familiar with Nuku Cola branding, maybe the colors have already got you a little suspicious. And because I ran a little low on my cap budget, it might look a little rough around the edges. Ta-da! Yeah, okay, so you may need to close one eye and squint a little. Some details may have had to have been left out, and I promised her the nose on her face there somewhere. And because I was so hard up on the camp budget, the rest of this area had to be left a little barren. But I was able to add a little thank you message here from me. Although it looks like it's a message from your friends at vault -Tec. But that would be a lie, because corporations are not your friend, especially in this universe. I've also got this slightly law-breaking YouTube link here. Uh, ignore this placeholder, I'll be updating it to point to here, once I know where here is. That way, anybody who stumbles across all of this accidentally can have the option of watching the same half-witted explanation as you just sat through. I would have loved to have been able to fit all this commentary business into one of these side rooms, but adding the necessary lighting would have been a drain on my valuable camp budget. So, as it is, the only thing I've managed to place behind these now locked doors is... Disappointment. And on that note, that brings me to the end of our tour. Thank you so very much for your time and attention. Take care, and bye for now.